that way. Hello, hello. Hi, and happy Thursday or Wednesday if, if you're in another part of the world or whatever day it is. Hello, hello. I am Silka, Heart for Art. I teach people step by step how to paint and learn new painting and art tips, which I'm going to share with you today so that you can get the most out of your painting. Welcome to this week's episode of Hearty Tips with Silka. This week, I am going to tell you all about artists color wheels these are awesome every artist should have one that way up uh, and i'm going to show you how to use it <coughs> to make your painting life way easier and less frustrating so if you have been painting or learning to paint and you're trying to mix colors but you're just not getting the colors that you want uh or maybe you just don't know what colors, you just don't know what colors to mix to get the color you want. Then this episode of Hearty Tips with Silka is for you. If you've been struggling to learn how to mix colors, if you're not sure what colors to mix to get the colors you want, or if you're not sure how to choose colors that will work together and you're ending up with colors, color combos that are like, oh, that's not looking good or you know combinations of colors that are just less than desirable shall we say then this is for you i'm going to show you how to use an artist color wheel i keep holding it upside down there we go i'm going to show you how to use a cartus uh, an artist color wheel so you can learn more about color mixing and easily get the colors you want and learn what colors go together well as well all right colors will just never be easier all right now i'm sharing this today because one of the most common questions i get when i'm teaching how to paint is how do i mix purple how do i mix orange how do i mix aqua it's basically how do i mix insert any color here um is that's one of the most common questions i get asked all right and now my mum had one of these when I was a young kid and when she was painting and I was learning to paint from my mum and I just loved it and it's just the handiest, most amazing thing ever and I keep holding it upside down. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Um, and I still use mine all my, every time I paint pretty much. So it's super helpful and I know that it will help you too. So type yes in the comments. If you can see and hear me okay for starters but type yes in the comments if you've ever been stuck trying to mix colors trying to figure out how do i mix this color i want this color or that color and i don't know how to mix it type yes stuck or anything let me know if you've ever been stuck trying to mix colors let me know if you've ever been color challenged so to speak um because if that's you and you want to learn about color mixing and what colors to combine i recommend getting a color wheel absolutely it's, a, it's called an artist color wheel and it's going to save you a ton of frustration and with your colors all right you can get it at any art supply store i have seen them at spotlight as well um not sure warehouse stationery has them i haven't seen them there yet but i could be wrong if anyone's found one there let me know um, or you can just order them online if you're not able to get out to the shops right now for whatever lockdown reasons there are then just google artist color wheel and look for something that looks like this and you can get one online essentially a color wheel tells you how colors will mix together all right hi sharon yay sharon says she's been color challenged i'm gonna i'm gonna change that for you today sharon just get yourself one of these um Although when you paint with me step by step, I always tell you what colors to mix. But if you're not painting with me, get yourself one of these. It tells you what colors, how colors mix together. And then it tells you how colors relate to each other as well. All right. There's basically one main circle. All right. I'm just going to peel this thing. This is like an unboxing. Woo! Feels like I'm lifting up its skirts, looking underneath. <laughs> um, there's one main circle. And then there's two circles sort of pinned in the middle to it that that spin all right so the main circle stays where it is and that spins and then on the other side same thing main circle and then it spins so i'm going to explain how all the spinniness is just color mixy awesome in a second but this is basically an awesome awesome tool um, for learning how to mix colors and how 
learning what colors work well together. All right. So the front, the front side is all your for learning color mixing. It's all your color mixing. All right. So I explain that side as well. Um, Sharon says, I do have a color wheel, but was never quite sure how to use it. Brilliant. Today is for you, Sharon. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> um if i can help one person learn to mix colors i'm happy so thanks sharon you're gonna make me happy today so today the front the front is for color mixing all right so essentially you have got let me just position myself a little better you have got your primary colors all right so i'm going to explain a little bit about colors as well your primary colors are your red where is the red your red your blue and your yellow all right red blue and yellow now these colors are your basic colors and now these colors cannot be made from any other colors all right you can't mix other colors together to get these colors that's why they're called primary colors and these are the three base colors that you use in varying combinations to mix other colors all right so those are your primary colors they're at opposite sort of corners if you like of the color wheel and then you've got your secondary colors all right, so that's when you mix two of those primary colors together, you get what's called a secondary color, all right? So you, if you mix red and yellow together, all right, so red and yellow, the one that's in the middle, orange, is what you'll get if you mix those two together, all right? So you've got your two primaries. The one in the middle is your secondary color, and that is orange. That's what you'll get if you mix those two together. Same is true if you mix yellow and blue together, all right? So, oh, but reflector, yellow and blue. Ignore this wheel in the middle for now. Yellow and blue. Where is it? So that we're just talking about the outer ring at the moment. Yellow and blue. The one in the middle is what you will get. So you'll get green. All right. And then if you mix blue and red, you'll see that the one in the middle on the outer ring is purple or violet, as it says so on here. All right. So those are your secondary colors. So your primary colors, again, are red blue and yellow and then when you mix varying combinations of those together you get your secondary colors which are purple orange and green okay from there there is another step all right so if you mix one primary color and it's adjacent secondary color you get what's called a tertiary color okay so now don't get hung up on these terms just look at the color wheels and see what's next to each other all right so if you mix a primary color so let's say we go blue all right and then you mix that with its secondary color which is green all right so remember yellow 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 and blue were the primary colors and they mixed to make green so that is your secondary color all right so if you mix your blue with its adjacent secondary color, which is green, you will get the tertiary color, which is a beautiful blue-green sort of aqua color, which is one of my favorite colors, all right? Let me know if I'm holding that close enough, if you can see it all right. Um, so, and that works for all of them. So the other way, if you got your primary color red and you mixed it purple with red and blue, all right? So that is the secondary color. And if you mix the primary with its nearest secondary color, you get a beautiful sort of crimsony color in between, or they've called it red violet here. All right. So that's your tertiary colors. So that's the basics, your primaries, your secondaries, and your tertiary colors. All right. So if you want to know how to how colors will mix, you essentially turn the wheel. All right. So that's where the second wheel comes into account. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Sharon. I'm glad you let me know you can see it okay. Um, so you, the secondary wheel basically shows you how each color will mix with the primary colors. So you can see here, if I peel that one back, you can see the primary colors here again, the red, the yellow, and the blue. All right. And there's also a white and a black. I'll tell you about those in a second. But when you, when you turn your color wheel, all right, you can see how any color mixes with these primary colors so i'll show you blue let's go blue all right so you can see you've got my blue here on the on the outer wheel and i've got my blue on the inner wheel so obviously if i mix blue and blue i'm gonna get oh blue <laughs> um, but then if i mix blue with yellow 
it shows me, see, in the little square down here, that I'm going to get a green, all right? So I've mixed my blue. My outer ring here is blue, and then the inner ring is yellow, and then the color I get is there's a little there's a little hole. See the hole there? There it is. That shows you what color is created when you mix those two colors together. All right, so again, I'll just reverse. If I mix blue and blue, I'm going to get blue. If I mix blue and yellow, I'm going to get green. And if I mix blue and red, I'm going to get a beautiful deep purple. This is the deep purple that's created here. So that's how that works. So you can essentially pick any color. If I go yellow and yellow, I'm going to get yellow. If I go yellow and red... So this is if you're, if you're not sure. What if I mix these two colors? If you mix yellow and red, you're going to get a nice orange. All right. So that's how that one works. Um, also, though, if I go back to blue again, there's also a white. You can see there's a white tab and a black tab there as well. Um, now, that is to show you what um, how it will look lighter and darker. All right. So if I mixed blue... And I put the white there. All right. You can see that it's this is the shade of blue you're going to get here. All right. That shows you the tint of a color. All right. And then if you want to see what the shading of color will look like, if you add black, then you're going to get a nice darker, darker blue here. All right. Um, oh, hi, Heather. How are you? And Huyen. Nice to see you back as well, Kim. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. So you basically pick any color and and just see how these colors will mix with it, and that will that will tell you what's going to happen when you mix those two colors by just looking at the square that's directly below it. All right. Um, now I often work backwards. <laughs> um, hello, Karen. Nice to see you as well. Thanks for joining us. Now I often work backwards, and I I just kind of peek underneath I will look for the color that I want to paint and it's often the beautiful aqua greens I love the aqua greens I love my aqua greens greens so I will look underneath and think I want that color I want I want to paint that color how do I mix that color all right um and then I will just keep spinning the wheel oh oh where is it where is it? I'll keep spinning the wheel until the square that I'm looking for shows up. There it is. There it is. And that will tell me that I need to mix blue with green um, to get the color that I want to mix. All right. So you can work backwards as well. One way is to go, what do these two colors do? But the other way is I want that color. How do I mix it? Spin the wheel till you find the square that corresponds and that will tell you what colors to mix to get the color you want. Um, Karen's asking where can we buy these most art supply stores will have them they're not expensive if you're paying any more than say $20 or so you're paying too much look somewhere else um, I, I buy these for the studio I usually pay anywhere around 15 to $20 a piece um, so people can use them in the studio um, some of the more boutique art stores will charge you up to $40, $50 for them. But that's too much. Go somewhere else. Spotlight has them. I think these are $22 at last call. Um, but shop around. They're just the most amazing thing. And, I mean, this one I've had for a while and it's still looking pretty good, Nick. You know, but they're good to have. Um, so that's the front. All right. That's all about color mixing and how two colors will mix together all right and so the outer ring i showed you all the primary colors your red your blue and your yellow your red your blue and the yellow sorry i was holding that towards me <laughs> your red your blue and the yellow um and then how if you mix two of the primary colors together the color in the middle is your secondary color um i'm, I'm with you sharon the backwards method is it's like i want that color <laughs> works for me um so yes the outer ring is all your primary colors and then all your secondary colors are the ones in the middle of your primary colors and then in between those are your tertiary colors your your you know so that is your outer ring and then with the other ring with these colors you'll see as you turn how two colors will mix to create the beautiful aqua color um so you know have a spin have a look, see, see how the colors work together. It's quite fascinating. On the other side, there's a whole nother side. On the other side, this side, 
So this side is all about color mixing. All right, how colors mix together. This side is all about color harmonies. All right, and the relationships between colors and how they go together. All right, so this is really good if you're picking, if you want to pick colors that work well together. If you if you're creating a painting and you're not sure if your color palette and you want some help and you just want to see how colors work together, you know how they look together. Will they work together? That is what this side is all about. The relationship between colors and color harmonies. All right. So coming up, I will warn you. This is your warning, fair and square. I'm going to use some words that you may not be familiar with. All right. Don't get hung up on them. They're just words. All right. Sticks and stones. Words can never harm your brain. <laughs> I'm going to use some words that may not sound familiar but seriously do not get hung up on the terms and look more at how everything is spaced and i will talk you through it and look at shapes all right let me explain all right so firstly the term analogous all right you'd be like what now sounds like some kind of hippopotamus it's not it just means colors that are next to each other that's all all right so if you want some real harmony and you want a lot of colors that are next to each other you use this part of the wheel and you can see Here's, here's five five holes. There's holes in it again. Look, look, look at all the holes, see? And you can spin the wheel and just pick three, three to five colors. You can pick these three. You can pick those four. You can pick all five, all right? Spotlight's $33, Karen. Oh, I must have got them on special. That's quite a lot. Okay. Um, Shop around. Have a look online. Trade me. You know, um, I usually anywhere around 20 bucks is good. Um, but, you know, you've all got your own budget, so you decide. Um, so, yes, analogous colors. If you spin the wheel, you will see if you want, if you like your purples, you like your greens, you can keep spinning the wheel and it will show you five colors that will work really good together that are next to each other on the color wheel. All right. Um, so you can pick three or five colors and that's how that works. All right. So I told you about complementary colors before, all right? So complementary colors, no, I didn't tell you about complementary colors. I told you about secondary colors. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the wheel, all right? So these are colors that one is up there and one is down oh, there, all right? So they're opposite each other on the color wheel. Now, these are great for maximum contrast, they really enhance each other's intensity because they're opposites, all right? Opposites attract, opposites enhance in this case. So when you put them next to each other, they always look really good. They enhance each other's colors. They really make the colors pop. Um, and they're really good if you want a nice, vibrant painting and you really want your colors to stand out against each other. You get that real bright contrast, that maximum contrast, all right? So these are the two colors. And it's, it's written on here. Everything that I'm telling you now is written on the color wheel, all right? So, see, see complementary. What is it? Compliment, complementary, all right? So, anything that's opposite each other on the color wheel is complementary. Um, it doesn't mean it's free. It means they complement each other. So, as you turn the wheel, you can see there's a nice, oh, look at that beautiful purple, blue, violet, and yellow. Wait, 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 I'm not pointing. They're there. Purple and yellow. See, they go really well together. They're at opposite ends of the color wheel, so they are complementary colors. All right. Um, next from that, we have what's called split complementaries. All right. Let me turn it back up that way. Wait, wait, that way. Because if we go back to our yellow and purple, hang on. So, yellow and purple. You can also have split complementaries where you choose the one color, but then choose the two colors next to, oh, hang on, the two colors next to its complementary color. So you would choose the yellow and these two colors here. All right. And that will work really nice to give you a great harmonious but vibrant contrasty painting as well. All right. So that's called a split complementary. So one color. And then the two colors beside its complementary color. So in this case, the two colors beside. So these are the complementary colors. You choose the one color and then the two colors beside the complementary. Or you could choose the purple and then these two colors 
to go in your painting. So that's called a split um, a split complementary. Excuse me, let me just have a swig of agua. Um, all right. So now is the terminology called triad colors. All right. Now the term tri, if you go back to your Latin or is it Greek? I don't know. Tri, tri is three. All right. So this essentially is three colors that are equally spaced apart on the color wheel. So they basically make a triangle on the color wheel, hence the term triad colors. All right. And again, don't get hung up on the terms. Just think triangle. All right. So um, I'll, start, I'll do your purple again. I'm quite liking the purple today. Um, so if we were to, to looking for triad colors and these all of these combinations work beautifully together to, to make your paintings. So if you're looking for combos, this is how to do it. And again, there is a triangle here. Look, see, it says, where is it? There it says triad, right? So it shows you, all right? So all the ones at the point of that triangle, okay, will go together well, all right? So where's my purple? I like, I'm, I'm liking my purple. So we could have our beautiful purple here, and then we go to the other point of the triangle. We have a lovely green, and the other point of the triangle is a lovely orange. So these three colors will be beautiful together. Whoop, whoop, where am I going there? Will work really well together. So we've got purple, orange, and green. Okay. We'll explain the different shades in here in a minute. But that is your triad colors. Okay. And you can spin your wheel and you can find any combination. Just look at all the points of the triangle. So red, red, and blue, and yellow. Oh, look, we've got our primary colors. <laughs> Just by chance. That will tell you which three colors will look beautiful together. All right. And then I would have thought it was called quadra something, but it's called tetra, tetra, tetrad colors. That's basically where we've done one, we've done two, and we've done three. Now we're doing four. Okay, so it's a combination of four colors. And again, there is a rectangle on here to show you. All right, nice and easy. So you spin your wheel, and you basically can see all four colors that will go beautifully together. Which which four do we want? We'll go, oh, I like that crimson. I like that crimson. Okay, so we've got a nice red-violet color here. Then we go to the other corner of the square. Square. We've got a beautiful blue-green. Then we go to the other corner. We've got a nice yellow-green. And then here we've got an orange. Wait, no, I went the wrong way. Here we've got a red-orange. All right. So all of these four colors will work beautifully together as well. So that tells you what colors will combine as far as if you want four colors. All right. So if you want one color, well, that's easy. Just pick one. If you want two colors, like any complementary colors will work nicely together. If you want three colors, you can use your ones next to each other up here, or you can use your triad colors on anything on the triangle. All right. And if you want four colors, you can use this combination again, or you can use anything on the rectangle shape. All right. That's your, your um, tetrad colors as they're known. But seriously, don't get hung up on the words. Just Think shapes. Think of space, how they're spaced, opposite, triangles, squares. Well, it's more of a rectangle, really, but, you know, think of it that way. It's much easier to work. Um, all right, so now I'm going to get into each color. You can see each color has, what color will I show you? Purple. I'm liking purple today. Let me go to purple. So each color has shades of itself as well now i'm calling them shades i shouldn't call them that because they each have different names at the top you have your pure color all right that is the color you're starting with all right let me start with a primary color actually i'm going to go red all right so at the top is your red your primary color your pure color that's like straight out of the bottle nothing mixed with it all right then the next color is what's called your tint and that is if you add white all right, so if you add white, that is the color you're going to get if you add white to the color you're starting with, okay? And then it kind of goes in shades, all right? Then you're going to, this next one, this bottom one is black, if you add black, all right? That is known as the shade of a color. So that's what it's going to look like if you add black to your pure color. And then in between is if you add both. If you add gray, you're going to get um, this tone in the middle, all right? So any color, if we go blue... Let's go blue. 
all right so here's blue we've got our pure color at the top then we've got our tint of what it's going to look like if we add white then our tone in the middle of what it's going to look like if we add gray which is a combination of black and white and then we've got our shade which is what it's going to look like if we add black all right so that's how you basically decide any color you're working with what it's going to look like lighter darker and medium all right so that's how you use the other side of that as well so those tones are really really good if you are working with highlights and shadows in a painting if you want to add depth and dimension um, the best way to do that is you start with your base color on whatever you're painting and then you add a, a tint and a shade all right and that will automatic tint on one side and a shade on the other and that will automatically make something look more like it's got more depth it will add dimension to it basically um, now I have done a blog on adding depth and dimension using tints and shades basically to make your painting look more three-dimensional and just have a lot more depth so have a look at my website go to the blogs and look for the one on creating depth and dimension using highlights and shadows um, if you want to get more in depth on how to use your tints and shades um, there um oh great sharon i'm so glad you're finding this helpful sharon's saying it's very helpful visual learner seeing you show the combos on the wheel helps greatly yes i'm a visual person too us creative people are visual we need to see stuff eh? seeing it written down doesn't work for us <laughs> we've got to see it we need visual stimulus absolutely um i'm glad you're finding this helpful sharon that's wonderful um so yes if you want if like i said if you want to if you want more in-depth learning on using your tints and shadows to create depth and dimension and just give your painting real good you know three-dimensionalness uh go and have a look on my blog and look for that one i did a whole blog on that explaining it a bit further so using the back here when you're picking colors um start with the color you're interested in so for me i like I like, you know, aqua colors and blues and stuff. So start with the color you're interested in and then decide how many colors you want in your painting. You know, so if I find myself that nice aqua blue, we put that at the very top. So there at the top here, there's a big pointy arrow at the top of the triangle. So you put the color you want, you like the most at the top there. And then you decide, oh, whoop, hell, we're off. Then you decide how many, you, you know, do you want it to be, am I in the right place? I've moved again oops <laughs> you decide if you want um you know a really vivid contrasty color then you choose the complementary color underneath um or if you want something that's nice and soft you can choose all the colors around it so you put it in the middle up here and you can choose all the soft colors around it look at that look at that beautiful combination how lovely would that be with the purples and your aquas and your greens i oh, see now i want to create a painting that's all foresty with those colors um you know but it just it just shows you all the beautiful combinations of of the one color that you chose how it's going to look with other colors um i'll go back to where i put it at the top again and you can see if i choose its complementary color i'm going to end up with a red orange sort of color but if i choose the um the triad colors i'm going to end up with with a nice yellow and a nice crimson which would also look great together and you can basically choose any combination of your your comp you know your split complementaries would be these two your just follow the shapes basically your bigger triangle your triad or your you know tetrad colors with your rectangle and that will give you lots of love i mean imagine that look at that that's got your hang on i have to put it at the top of the rectangle so that's going to give me all beautiful look at those those colors would be amazing together we're going to get that beautiful blue green that red violet and then down here we've got a nice orange and a yellow green they would look amazing together yay hello Anne marie um yes you can watch this again on replay all good there's always a replay anything i do there's always a replay all good so come back when you've got more time uh, and watch it again and again if you need to keep learning all good um so that that is basically 
you know, start with the color you're interested and then just look at the color relationships. Spin your wheel, so to speak, and look at the color relationships based on the shapes, all the sh all the different shapes. You know, if you want one color, two color, three color, four color, just look at all the different shapes and choose your colors that way. And if you decide you don't like that combination, pick another color to start with. All right. It's fun. It's fun. This side, is, there's, there's no peeking underneath. is isn't helpful. <laughs> Only that side is helpful. Now, if you like your pastels, remember I told you about your tints and your tones and your shades? If you like your pastels, um, you'll want to be using this outer ring up here. All right, this top ring, all your tints, okay? So all your pastels are in that top ring there where your tints are. So that is basically all these colors with white added to them, okay? That's what they're going to look like, all right? Um, and, yeah, pastels... Oh, they're just so soft and lovely. They're really good for flowers when you do flowers. I like doing pastels, um, flowers and pastels. Um, but then I like my bright, vivid colors too. But if you want to do pastels, you know, look at all these colors. And again, you can basically, when, you, when you're looking at, you've decided you want three colors. Um, so if I want yellow, for example, I would use a pastel yellow. And then I would go to the triad. And I would use a pastel pink and a pastel blue. All right. Sorry, I went off screen there. Um, and again, if you want to use your use four colors, you could use a pastel green and then just follow the, use all the four colors on the outer ring of those tints. All right. If you want to go darker, you can use all the colors on the inner ring. All right. So that's all your colors with black added. Um, and all of those colors will go really nicely together. They'll all be the same, um, you know, the same shade, and they will go nicely together. So that is the basics of the of color and the color wheel. There are, of course, there's a lot more science to it, but I don't want to confuse you. So hopefully that's just been enough of the basics of how to mix your colors on this side and how to combine your colors on this side, all right? And how to cheat with your color mixing by peeking underneath. <laughs> um, that is the basics of a color wheel. If you want to learn more about color mixing and color harmonies, this is the most awesome tool you can own. Every artist should have one. Um, I, I, I can't live without I can't live without mine. I use it all the time. All right. Um, so let me sum up what I taught you. I've, I've written it down so I don't have to remember it. Um, 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 you can get them from any art supply store, order them online. Um, the boutique art stores will charge you a little bit more. Um, so just work within your budget. Um and it will basically tell you how to mix your colors and how to combine your colors. Um, it's a super great tool for, for learning. Um, you know, if you're new to painting, or even I've been painting all my life and I still use it. So that's how good they are. So I told you about your primary colors. All right. The three colors that you cannot mix from anything. They are made colors that you can't mix other colors to make them. So red, blue, red, blue, and little. Okay, yellow, they're your primary colors, and they're the three colors you use to mix every other color, all right? So when you mix each of your primary colors, you get secondary colors, all right? So they're the ones on the outer ring here, they're the ones in the middle, they're the secondary colors, all right? And then when you mix your a primary color with an adjacent secondary color, you get what's called a, a tertiary color. So I've mixed a primary color, with an adjacent secondary color, so if I mix red and orange, I get the tertiary color, which is a sort of a red orange. All right. Um, that's the front of the wheel is used for color mixing. All right. And the outer ring shows you all those primaries and secondaries and tertiary colors. And then spinning the wheel, all right, will show you how each color mixes with the primary colors. All right. So if I've got a blue, if I've got blue, and I mix it with yellow and the square underneath, right, will show you what color it makes, okay? And you can turn each one 
so that's going to make a nice purple there and if you want to cheat oh hang on wait no it shows you what tints and tie of tints and shades it makes as well so if you add white to blue you're going to get a nice light blue and if you add black to blue you're going to get a nice dark shade of blue there and then if you want to cheat and you're like i want i want i want that color i want that look look at that beautiful purple look at that beautiful purple where is it there that one if you want i, I want that color you can cheat and keep spinning the wheel where is it where is it where is it until the square opens up above it and that'll tell you which colors to mix so you'd need to mix your red violet and blue to get that color all right super handy i don't know if it's cheating but it feels a little bit sneaky peeking underneath um <laughs> what else did i tell you oh yes so that's your color mixing side this is your color harmony side and the relationship between colors all right great for picking colors that work well together all right if you're creating a painting and you're not sure what colors will go with other colors and you don't want to end up with the colors that go oh that's not working use your color wheel all right so i'm just summing up now if you want more of a breakdown wait till i'm finished and watch the re replay um so you've got your pure colors at the top all right so i've got yellow at the top and then each square is if you add white, that's the color you will get. You'll get a tint of yellow. If you add gray, you will get a um, tone of yellow. And then if you get add black, you will get the um, shade of yellow. All right. So each of these squares will show you what happens when you mix white, gray, and black with any color. All right. And then... You basically start with the color that you're interested in. I'm going to go with, with blue today, right now. So you start with the color you're interested in, put it at the top of the triangle, all right, where the arrow points up, and that will tell you all the relationships of colors that will look good with it. If you just want complementary colors, you go straight to the bottom. So blue and orange would work really good together. Am I looking at that right? Yep, blue and orange. Or you can do split complementaries, blue and these two colors here. Or you can pick the triad colors, which I also explained to you about, which is basically they're evenly spaced apart on the color wheel. So they kind of make a triangle, all right? So you've got blue, yellow, and red, your primaries, all right? If I spin it, you've got a blue, maybe purple, purple, purple green wait i'm looking at the wrong square purple green and orange would look awesome together so you just follow the triangle and then you can and or you can follow the rectangle and that will tell you what four colors will work together go to the four corners of the rectangle it shows you it points at them all all right cool um so you start with the color you're interested in put it at the top or put it in one corner of any of the shapes and that will tell you what colors will work in harmony with the color you like and what colors will combine well together um yes um also <laughs> sharon finally i can use my wheel <laughs> time to spin and win what spin and paint <laughs> as it was honestly you now that you know how to use it you will be lost without it um well Sharon's already let me know if it's it's been helpful anyone else let me know if you found this helpful um and let me know if you've had fun with your color wheel when you when you've had a go um but yeah let me know if if this has been helpful if you enjoyed my tutorial like it share it love it tell others about it um if you're watching on YouTube be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can see future tips and tutorials i do them reasonably regularly and you can learn loads of stuff to help your painting on your painting journey um and if you don't have a painting that you're working on that you're picking colors for and you'd like me to show you step by step how to create your very own painting then do go and check out my online and studio paint parties uh right there heartforart.co.nz um 
or grab an on-demand painting tutorial. I just loaded heaps of new ones. There's loads of colourful ones. Um, um, what did I put? I put the Pakutakawa blossoms there. There's another flower painting. I put the water lilies. My name's water lilies. Uh, there's a Tui. There's a, is there a fantail yet? Not yet. There's loads of on-demand painting tutorials there as well. Um, or you can join me in the studio. Come join me in the studio. I have studio and online paint parties. They're all fun. They're all great. And you leave with a finished painting super fun and they're all step by step and easy and just yeah you'll have fun painting um so head over to my website heartforart.co.nz check out the upcoming events on the home page the favorites coming up are there or just click on whatever whatever you're interested in the menu the upcoming virtual or online or on demand or in studio it's all on the website Go have a browse. There's loads, loads and loads of colourful, easy, fun paintings to choose from. And if you want to get creative, use your colour wheel. You can follow my step-by-step -step guide or you can choose your own colours. Awesome. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you so much. I love sharing stuff with you. I love helping you on your painting journey. Do let me know if you have any other questions or anything else you want to learn. Uh, email me. DM me, whatever, and I will try and answer your questions. And generally, it's you guys asking me questions that inspire these hearty tips with Silka and let me know what you'd like me to teach. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope to see you behind a paintbrush soon. Have fun. Bye.